currently practice. He's a columnist for 11 years for the Santa Monica Press. He's authored four books to date, uh, including co-authoring a book, What About Wally With Me? And, uh, and that seems to be pretty recent. And he's uh, featured nationally and internationally as an expert in pet custody. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce David Pizarro. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate it. We okay on sound? I guess we're okay on sound. How's everyone doing today? All right. So today I want to talk about how to write and publish a book. And the first part of my speech will be on the writing process. And then we're going to cover the actual printing process, how you deal with print-on-demand printers. And then we'll cover some marketing. And then I'll take some questions at the end. But what I'd like to start off with is, if you want more information about me or the book or the process, I'd like to pass these out and you can sign up. And if you start now, then everybody will have an opportunity to be on the list. So the first question I have, what is a book? There's everything from 25 pages, this is how your camera operates, to war and peace. So the question for you is, where in that range of books do you want to be? And with the understanding that a book can be anything from 20 pages to 5,000. And if you think that your book has to be on the 5,000 range, you're probably not going to get it done in 90 days. Just saying. But if you're closer to the average book size, which is about 225, 250 pages these days, for your typical paperback, that's going to be not that's not going to be so hard to do. But if you're going to go even shorter than that, like my books usually range between 100 and 120 pages, which is an ideal size for my first target market. The first three books I wrote were for men. They were a man's guide to divorce strategy, one on child custody, and one on domestic violence. Short, to the point, because I knew my target market. Men just want bottom line it. And that's going to apply to you too when you figure out what's the book that you want to write and who's your target market going to be. Then that brings us to everyone has a book in them. You might not think you're an expert on something, but I'm here to tell you there is something that you've spent the last 10 years on, whether it's cooking, whether it's cats, whether it's guinea pigs, whether it's capybara, whatever it may be, you have enough information to write 120 pages to inform somebody else about your experiences and your knowledge. And that's really all it takes. Most of us have, at first, a fear that if we start writing, we're not going to have anything of value to share. We think that you have to have an MD or a PhD or an MBA behind your name, but that's not really true. Is there anybody in here that's an expert on cats? I got two, three. How about dogs? Oh, dogs are more popular in this room. The last session was guinea pigs. Anybody got a guinea pig in here? Hey, we got guinea pig people. How long have you owned a cat? Okay. So you've got 15 years of playing with the cat, feeding with the cat, medical issues, your personal experiences. You're an expert. You're an expert. And exactly. And, and that's my point, that you have something to share that somebody else could want. And that's the important part for all of us. So now that we've determined that we're an expert and we know what we want to talk about, I want to write a book. It's going to be on dogs. Oh god, I don't know where to start. Okay. Well, there's three basic ways. The most obvious is chronological. You get a puppy, you start with the puppy years. This is what we need to do with feeding, potty training, grooming, expert training. Maybe we're going to do something like make a service dog, whether it's for somebody who's blind or deaf. Maybe we're going to work with search and rescue. 
Maybe we're going to do a show dog. All of those are phases in the chronology of a dog's life. So we've got the puppy phase, we've got the training phase, we've got the expert phase when they're off on a show or actually working. And then we've got the elder phase. So right there's an outline. We've got three big ones. Puppy, adult, elder. Now all we have to do is go puppy, training, feeding, pooping, all the important things that puppies do. And you can do that same thing, just flip it around, make it alphabetical or make it topical. If you've spent five years taking, let's say, a Malamute and turning it into a show dog, you have five years expertise in what it takes to train a dog for that. You've been to dog shows. You've been to dog contests. You can write about that so that when I go on the internet and I type in Malamute, dog shows, training, you'll pop up and I can benefit from your experience. And if I'm interested in doing that, odds are I'll spend between five and fifteen dollars for a book to learn it. My puppy probably cost a thousand dollars. I'm probably going to spend five thousand dollars on training and grooming and traveling annually. Easy. What's five or fifteen dollars for a book? Does anybody have any questions on that topic, on how to outline? Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. Next up is the writing process. Now we have our outline. We've gone and we've covered our puppy year, our adult year, our elder years. We've got all of our various subtopics. What do you do? What I recommend, figure out what your title is going to be. Because your title is going to reflect not only the topic of the book, but also your audience. When I first started, my first book was A Man's Guide to Divorce Strategy. It tells you who my audience is. It tells you what the topic is. It's really simple. With that in mind, that became a theme for me of the book. So everything I was writing was from that perspective. It made it very simple when I was going through my outline. So day one, come up with your title. Malamute training for idiots. Excuse me. Like I said, I'm an idiot. Once you've done that process of getting your title down and your topic, go away. Go get a cheeseburger and a chocolate shake. Take the rest of the day off. Because I don't want you getting wrapped up in, oh my god, now I've got to bang out a chapter a day in order to make my 90 days to get the book done. You don't need to do that. First day, get your title out of the way. Second day, now let's talk about how many pages a day you should be writing. We're only looking to do 100, maybe 120 pages in that ballpark. So that's about a page a day, right? But a page a day writing, an eight and a half by 11, is two pages in this book. Because of the way it's laid out. And that's the same thing that's going to apply in your book. So don't get wrapped up in, I've got to write a page a day or 20 pages a day in order to get my process done. Things that you're writing in Microsoft Word or Pages or, or um, what's the other one? Word Star? Is Word Star still around? I'm really old. Whatever word processing program you're using, the pages are not necessarily going to translate the same. So don't get too focused on that issue. The bigger topic is working through each of your outline points. So first day we've got a title. Second day we're going to start on forward. Who are we writing this for? Why are we writing this book? What's the point? That's going to be a real easy one. And I want you to start there because it's going to be easy. I want you to get in the flow of writing. You start off with, I've spent the last 15 years working with dogs and the last five showing Bouncer, the prime Malamute of Utah. And you just go in and you just you get the flow going so that on day three, when we're at chapter one, line one, we've already got something behind us. We've got some momentum going. And now it's going to be easy 
What's my topic? Outline topic. Puppy. How to buy a puppy. Do you want to go to a breeder? If we're looking to do a show dog, if we're looking to do a service dog, maybe, because we're actually looking for temperament. Are we looking to do a rescue dog and we're just looking to have a pet? Okay. Whatever it is you want, whatever our first topic is, write on that first topic and be done. Don't beat yourself up. Don't think you've got to get through three pages a day. First topic, maybe it's only two pages. That's okay. As you go through your outline and as you do point by point, what you'll find is, I expect, it's going to be easier to write. Now, most people think, oh, I'm great on the starting and I can never finish it. Well, sure. That's because most people just start, they look at a blank page and they're like, my story. I don't know what to do. But you already have an outline. You've got a roadmap. You know where you're going. So all you have to do is take a look at it. And if you reach a point where you're done for the day, go get a cheeseburger and a chocolate shake. You can see I have a lot of uh, writer's block. <laughs> it's kind of a good thing. Once you've done a first draft, and your first draft will probably take you about 45 to 60 days, the editing process is the hardest, most painful thing for somebody else to do. Throw it away. Let somebody else do it on the first one. I hired a guy. I paid him $15 an hour. It took him about four hours, so $60, to just go through and clean up the basics, catch the typos, catch the missed words, catch the grammar that's not parallel. Just do the, the rough draft of the editing. I'm not talking about going through and chapter 3 needs to be put over here by chapter 15 and 14 needs to go over to 2 and 1 needs to go to 4. Uh, you don't need to do that if you've done your outline properly. You're already going to know everything's going to fall along the chronological or alphabetical or topical layout. So the structural editing isn't necessary for you by my system. The word choice might be, and that's where you come around and you do your second draft. After it's come back and typos have been fixed, and I don't know about you, but when I'm typing, I often, my brain will go faster than my fingers. And I will type out a sentence, and I'll go back and look at it, and there'll be three words missing. Oh, I'm seeing a couple heads go, yep. <laughs> That's when somebody else's eyes are really beneficial. Because if you try and do it yourself, you're automatically going to put the words in. It's just, it's just natural. Proofreaders and editors are, your, are uh, going to save you a ton of time, and they're easy to find these days thanks to Craigslist. Creative writing or gigs, either one of those two categories, and you're going to have somebody for, depending on where you live, figure $10 to $15 an hour just to read through it into a rough draft. The cover design. This is where get to have a lot of fun. Little thing about covers. A book that has a dog on the cover sells 25% more. Go figure. This cover design was done by that man. We were talking about the book and we were talking about how to share a dog in divorce and break up with somebody. We've both been through breakups, we both share our pets. We were trying I think we were eating a pizza, and he's like, oh my god, I had, could have been cheeseburger, oh my god, I've got it, and he sketched out this, described it to me, and I'm like, it's perfect, it's brilliant, the hardest part we had was picking the dog, <laughs> that's, that's, that's actually how we ended up doing it, yeah, but your cover design is where you send the message, this message what the book is about. One dog, two leashes, one pink, one blue. It, all you have to do is look at it and go, oh, that's what's going on there. Oh, I understand what co-parenting is. Got it. I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is called the spine of a book. And the spine 
varies with how many pages you have. So you have to, when you're doing your layout and your design, you have to be very conscious of that. So what we did, and every, every good spine has this, author's last name, title of the book, production company, publishing house, media company, however you're organizing your business. seen them thousands, maybe millions of times. Who's ever thought about what's on the back cover? Okay, you got to be a publisher. Okay, then there we go. <laughs> okay. But on the back cover of almost every professionally produced book, you have a barcode, you have a publisher, you have a price. And this is the part that I think really sets aside those well-done self-published books and the ones that just scream, I'm, I'm a newbie. The reference words, the categories. If this book were to go into a physical Barnes & Noble, a stack of them will be handed to a clerk and say, go put these on the shelf. The clerk looks at it and says, where's it go? Okay, reference, legal, divorce, Yours is probably going to be reference, animals, show dogs, service dogs, training, whatever that's going to be. And you don't have to worry too much about what the categories are. There aren't hard and fast rules. But think about what a clerk in a bookstore would use to figure out what bookshelf it would go on. And that's your answer. There's no real brain science in any of this. I'm ahead of myself. Oh, no. Forgot one. Barcodes. The barcode on the back. There's two parts to a barcode. There's the big part, which is the SKU number. That's the number that identifies a book individually. And there's the second part of it, which is the price encoded in the barcode. If you have a price, You'll get a number there. If you don't have a price, it'll just be a, I think they use nines or zeros. Barcodes are easy to get. All you have to do is go to myidentifiers.com. You set up an account. You set up a title. The metadata, which would be the author's name, the blurb about the book, page number. They will assign a SKU number, and if you've done pricing, they'll, they'll automatically barcode the price for you. And they'll, genu and they'll generate either it's a PDF or a TIFF or a PNG, one of those computer lingo things that I don't really understand. But it's a little image, and you can download it, and you can put that in your, your book design. book design process is probably something you want to hire out when it comes to doing your, your front cover, your spine, and your back. It's important to know what your final page count is going to be because your designer is going to need to know for the width of the spine when they're laying out the whole thing. Because the way it, a cover is designed by a designer, there's one long file. It's like a giant sheet of paper. There's the front page, the spine, and the back page. And the numbers are easy, the sizes are easy, because that'll de that's determined based on what size book you're going to produce. This is uh, eight and a half by five, if I remember correctly. Yes? I think it's better. I think it's better to put a price on the barcode because, it, to me, it screams of professionalism. And when, when we were designing our book, I wanted something that said, I bought this book at Barnes & Noble, Borders, wherever you would normally buy a book, because it looks professional. Right. But our pricing was $14.95 US, $18.95 Canadian. They're not going to go much higher than that, realistically. 
probably going to actually go lower than that. They'll probably retail it for $9.95. Make you like a POP right at the checkout stand if you get your other three books. Oh, that looks interesting. I'll get that one and I'll get a copy for my brother. The interior design of a book. Having done it, I don't recommend you do it. <laughs> Go to Craigslist, hire somebody to do it for you. You can use programs like Microsoft Word and Pages, for, um, which is an Apple program, to do your layout. There are so many variables in doing an interior book layout between the gutter that has to happen, the page numbering, the headers, graphic elements, chapter breaks, indexes. For the $25 an hour you're going to spend the designer to actually do this, who knows what they're doing, it's worth it. Not only is it worth it in the quality of the book is going to look better, your cheeseburger intake will radically drop, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just going to be a nightmare. Because for most of us, if we don't have a graphics background, do you really know how to line everything up so that, it even, so that it's even, so that it's centered properly? so that the page numbers are always in the right place. So there's a little graphical element at the top. I tried. It didn't work for me. And then if you get to the back where there's appendices, like for us, we had a parenting plan in our... Thank you. I appreciate that. Mostly it's due to my co-writer, who's a very talented graphic designer. I, on the other hand, it would look more like crayons and we don't want to go there. So my advice is hire a designer, go on Craigslist. There's also Odesk. Odesk. Well, we, we, we're, we're getting to you later. <laughs> don't worry, I didn't forget you. <laughs> but you can always hire Steven. Uh, there's also Fiverr.com, which is you put up what you want to do and how much you're willing to pay, starting at five dollars on up. There's Creative Hot List, which is where I hired a designer. If you're thinking of doing this yourself, if you're thinking of doing your own layout and your own cover design, I highly recommend you go to Lynda.com. It's L-Y-N-D-A.com. They have a free trial for, I think, three or five days, 30 days, and then but you only get half of the website. But for $25 a month, you can have unlimited video training on lynda.com. They don't pay me for this. They have some of the best software training, and it's broken up into five-minute segments. So usually a video will be three to six minutes, maybe seven minutes on one little topic, so it's very digestible. I have, I have used lynda.com for photography, videography, offset printing, Adobe, pages. The, the wealth of information that you can get for $25 is unbelievable. If you really want to do this stuff, but I don't recommend you do. It's way too much work. <laughs> way too much work. But they also have programs on marketing and public relations, which can be very beneficial. And if you're not used to public speaking, aside from Toastmasters, which I'm a huge proponent of, I think Toastmasters is one of the best deals on the planet if you want to learn how to do public speaking. Lynda.com also has a public speaking video training program. All right, so we've written our book. We've got our design. There's two ways to go. You can go the traditional self-publishing, which I will talk about, or you can do print-on-demand, which I think is probably one of the biggest revolutions in our society when it comes to book production. Anybody can do print-on-demand these days. There's three big ways you do it. The first one is Lightning Source. Lightning Source is an Ingram company. They're the largest distributor of books in the world, and they will get you into the bookstores. They will also get you into the libraries. They will get you on Amazon.com. 
they will get you on Amazon.com.eu, Amazon.com.nz, everywhere. Yes, ma'am. If you go through Lightning Source, you can. Yes. Traditional self-publishing, in, in, in the traditional self-publishing model is you write your book, you go, you hire a printer, you make 5,000 copies. They're not interested. Library of Congress isn't really interested. Nobody really cares. Once you're going through Lightning Source, you have, there's an imprimatur of respectability and professionalism because of what they make you go through on the front end. And once you've done the front end, the back end is a snap. The front end part of this, you have to set up a company, so you become a publishing company. I chose liberomedia.com. Set up my publishing company, get all the information, they assign a contact person to help me with my uploads, my downloads, all of my processing. That part is, I think, free, last time I checked, to set up my company. A, a week to process all the information, assign somebody to you, make contact with you. But now you're a publishing house. So whatever name you want to use as your publishing house. Maybe it's Malamute Press. You're going to set that up. You're going to be a publisher. Now you're officially a publisher. The next step is your designer hands you a thumb drive that has a PDF version of your finally laid out interior, your finally laid out cover design. You go on to Lightning Source, you log in, you upload. They'll do their little whatever it is they do, their magic. They come back and say, okay, we're ready to print. Part of our deal is you have to buy one copy as a minimum, it's $30, and they FedEx it to you the next day. It's the most unbelievable feeling when your first book comes to you and there's a, a FedEx package from a lightning source and you rip it open and you pull it out and you're like, oh my god, I'm an author, oh my god, I'm an author. It's phenomenal when you do that. And you're done. In every they do soft cover, hard cover, they do dust cover, they do black and white, cream paper, white paper, and I believe they've now started four color interior. So you can do photo books. That's it. Right. Right. Yes, ma'am. That's the publishing company. You, you go to lightningsource.com and you say, I want to start up a new account. And you just pick a name for your publishing company. And you set up, it's just like when you go to a regular website and they're, they want you to register. It's the same process. I picked the name Liberal Media. Yes, correct. Correct. No, no, no. It's, it's just the name that you choose for your company. Right. And once that's done, now you are officially a company. And that's important because if you're like me, you're not going to do just one book. You're going to do more than one. I have four books up, we've got three in production, we're, we're rocking and rolling, and I've got a bunch of people who are coming to me saying, can you help me with my book? I don't want to deal with any of it. Go. I just want to write it. And I'm like, okay, we'll work out a deal and we'll figure out royalties and all of that great stuff. And that's one of the nice things about Lightning Sources. Once you've uploaded it, gotten your first, back, your first copy back, and you've gone, oh, this is great. No, I don't want to change anything. And you have an opportunity to change things doesn't print properly, if the gutter's not right, if the cover design's off, you can send it back to your designer, they'll, write, they'll make changes, you upload it, you print another copy, and you do that process until you're ready and you're happy. Once it's done and you're like, this is my book, you go on Lightning Source and you click Publish. And this is, do you want to be in the library advance sheets for next month, $25? Yes. Do you want US and Canada? Do you want US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand? US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Europe? Yes, yes, yes. $12, $12, total process, $85, whatever it turns out to be. And you're done. That 
that's it. Next thing you know, all of that information from your broker barcode information is going to get pulled over. Your PDF is going to get distributed up to Amazon. And inside of two weeks, and usually it's about five days, your book is going to be available on Amazon.com. The cover design will show up as an image. Your metadata will show up. And somebody can buy it. That's a great feeling. You set a price of fourteen ninety five, and then you get to set a discount rate for Amazon to sell at, and that can be anywhere from zero up to fifty five percent. Your discount rate is kind of their inducement to purchase, to to, to distribute you. They will. Sell it for you, take their percentage, they send an email over to Lightning Source that says one copy of this book, Dog Training of Malamutes for Dog Shows, gets printed. Here's what's left over after our percentage has been taken. You take out your printing costs and your shipping costs, which for a 120 page book is about $3 total. And the balance, they deposit into my checking account at the end of the month. And I get a statement that says, you sold 45 bucks, and here's your $135. Awesome. Yes. Right. Yeah. You can do that, too. You get to buy them at the $3 rate. And actually, I think because you're doing bulk shipping, it's, it actually comes out lower because do bulk shipping back to yourself. It comes out probably closer to a dollar or seventy-five to two dollars maybe. Right. And then it's list price of fourteen ninety five. I think they sell it for nine ninety five and then they take their percentage and then Lightning Source takes their percentage. At the end of the day I get a check every month. And it's no fuss, no muss, no administration, no pick up the book, put it in an envelope, print a label, figure out the postage, ship it. No, it's done. I can be working on my next book, not have to worry about selling. And I do. This book actually links back to Amazon. My law books are available as a PDF download on my other website. So I do both. I have ebooks and my law book. And in this one, we haven't done an ebook yet, but we're about to. Uh, the lady in the back had a question. Yes. They are doing nothing printing and distributing. So it's all yours. You can do whatever you want with it. There's a, one more question, and then I want to move on. Lighting source fulfills. They have a huge printing facility in, uh, I think it's Knoxville, Tennessee, and it's just a giant warehouse of printers, and it just drop ships them and they're out. It's an unbelievable process. All right. The other two big self-publishing print-on-demand are Lulu and CreateSpace. Now, I have used Lulu for my test books, and I have to tell you, quality of Lulu versus the quality of Lightning Source, I could not tell them apart. They were absolutely identical. Part of me thinks they're printed in the same facility. CreateSpace is an Amazon-owned company. So you have a it's a little bit easier on the integration and a little bit quicker. The problem is it doesn't distribute out to other facilities. So when you're with Lightning Source, you'll be on Amazon, but you'll also be on Barnes & Noble. With CreateSpace, you're going to only be on Amazon. Kind of a. Can you? When I last checked, you could. So. They're they're working that out now. Okay. So I'm wrong. Right. Okay. I'll have to look that up. Sure. Taking about forty. So what it 
going down to? Uh, hey, I've got that covered. I'm going ahead with some cons. The income, the book sales, just go over a little bit of this. With traditional self publishing, you buy 5,000 books, you pay for it up front, you sell them for $10. Each book probably costs you maybe it's 75 cents to $1.50, somewhere in that range. The problem with that is, is you have to do all of the fulfillment, you have to do the storage, you've got all the carrying costs. Exactly. And it's a great way to go for some people. It's just not something that I thought was going to work in today's environment. And it's so easy these days, why wouldn't I go with what's easier? Print on demand we've covered, and the ebook, the way I do the ebooks, um, my PDFs are available on my download, uh, are downloadable on my website. You go to the website, you click on it, it takes you over to PayPal. The PayPal process takes somebody's credit card, they run the money, then they route them back to my website, and a PDF is downloadable right then. It's just a click. The nice thing about that is I automatically have that $11.95 discounted rate, but I get all of it in my, in my PayPal account. Less than 45 cents, whatever. There probably is. I don't know it. Truth be told, um, with with this stuff, it, it's digital rights. That's like the lady next door. <laughs> she was talking about copyright, FTC. It's just an area that I don't have a lot of information on because it's a technology that I don't know a lot about. Uh, just, just a comment. There was, there was a, a survey done by, uh, I believe it was Penguin, the traditional publishers, and they did a survey on piracy mm -hmm. of the e-books. saw no difference whatsoever of an increase whether they had used the, the uh, digital rights. Yeah. yeah. Right, they're going to find it right. I consider it a free advertising. Sure. When you're doing traditional self-publishing, you have all of these steps you have to go through. You have to find a printer. You have all of your setup charges. You got minimum print runs. Usually, it's a thousand to five thousand. You have to store it. You have to do your shipping and fulfillment. Those are all things that you don't have to do with print on demand, so that you can focus on either marketing your book or moving on to the next one. Marketing. Once you're on Amazon, you'll have a, an author page on Amazon that you can establish. It sets up your photos, you can do a blog, you can start describing yourself. You can use that as a marketing tool. The other big thing that I find is I like having my titles available as URLs for my website. So, what about Wally is actually what about Wally.com? You can go there. You'll see my ugly mug, you'll see Steve's glorious face, you'll see our descriptions, and you'll see giant buttons that say buy here, and it routes you back to Amazon or Barnes and Noble. I'm going to cover YouTube ads in a moment, but once you've written a book, I highly recommend you send a press release out. Not think you're really going to get picked up by the Today Show because frankly it's never happened to me, so I don't think anybody's going to get it. Come on now. It's on a little bit of laughter here. We've only got a few minutes left. The press release is important because if you have your URL in there, now that starts getting distributed out. So you start hopefully get some backlinks. And that's the real point of the press release. And maybe it'll come across a reporter's desk. They'll be doing a story. They want you as an expert. Print, TV, radio, blog talk radio shows. Do any interview you can. They're fabulous. They're really easy once you get in the groove. They're usually by phone. They're usually five to ten minutes. I've done blog talk radio shows out of Texas, Connecticut. I've done one out of Australia for my men's family law stuff. It's amazing what you can do with blog talk radio these days. There are marketing programs. Steve Harrison is one of the premier book marketers in the world these days. He has a program called Quantum Leap. It takes you through, over the course of 12 months, 
everything you need to know about how to market your book. And it starts with step one through to, okay, now you're on the Today Show, and everything in between. Author House is another program where they do marketing. If you're going to do sort of a bootstrap guerrilla program, Harrow is help a reporter out. It's harrow.com. Dot org? Yeah. Dot com. And you get three three times a day you'll get lists of calls for article experts. So there'll be somebody in Seattle doing an article on Malamutes for the Iditarod. They want you to come in and comment. It's a great way to respond and to get your name out there. Reporter Connection is Steve Harrison's version. And this is where the big plug comes for Stephen May with Creative Vision House, who's done 39 years of press and marketing in the vet and pet industry. I highly recommend him as an expert in the field for everything from press releases, cover design, interior design, and full marketing packages. My pleasure. <laughs> Stephen May? That's Stephen May. Okay. Now, one area that marketing is going into these days is video. And YouTube ads, I'm finding, are very successful. This is a YouTube ad that I run. It's a 30-second ad that runs in front of other YouTubes. So if you're going on, you're going to see you know, dog show in West Westminster. This ad will pop up before that. Help! Ah! No. Why isn't it working? I'm having technology problems. You think? I'm sorry. Nothing is. Even though we stood up, we both still loved him. We wanted to make sure he would be a part of both our lives. But there was no book to show us how to cope here in that. And that's why What About Wally was written. If you're going through a breakup and you want to learn how to co-parent a pet, how to share your shih tzu, then you need to read this book, What About Wally? It's available online at Amazon.com. Because the love of a pet is forever, even if relationships aren't. Thank you. You know, you got to share the shih tzu every now and then. Okay, so that's a YouTube app that I've run that's working for us. And well, that's the beauty of a YouTube ad, is it's just like a Google ad where it's an auction. So you get to set your own price. So the What About Wally ads, I think, will run in between five cents and 25 cents per view. And here's the key, with, here's the real key with a YouTube ad. You have to watch the first five seconds. That's what YouTube and Google make you do. So if you get your message across in the first five seconds, even if they click off, who cares? It doesn't matter. So when you're writing your YouTube ad, think that you've got to just get that first message across because that's what they're going to have to watch. Okay, now I'm okay. 11 44 and 53 seconds. Almost done. Okay. Resources. This is just a quick list of the most of the highest resources that I've mentioned. Linda.com for online training. Myidentifers.com for barcodes. Odesk, Fiverr, Creative Hot List, Freelancer, I forgot to mention earlier. Those are all great websites for designers, whether the book cover or the interior. LightningSource.com is who I recommend because I think they're the most professional. I think they're the ones that get you the widest dispersion. Honestly, I have sold a divorce book in Bangalore, India. I have no idea why anybody in Bangalore is buying my book, but I'll take the money. 
There's also Lulu and Create Space, and obviously Stephen A with Creative Vision House. Stephen May. <laughs> Call me maybe. If you're interested, feel free to send me an email if there's something I can help you with, whether it's distribution or help you with some design, some concepts. If you've got an idea you want to develop and flesh out in a book on your own, I'm more than happy to talk to you. Um, anybody got some questions? Sure. Yes, ma'am. The ISBN number is the number, and the barcode is the, are the bars. And, and oh, so it's correct. So it's correct. Oh. Sure. Okay, so who's got an idea for a book and they, that they want to write? What, the, what do you want to write on? Lady in red. Those are both great topics, you know, and, and I think that those will make great titles. Tales from the Tales of the Boxes. Yes, ma'am. The Capybara people are here. I love the Capybara people. Take a look at take a look at MagCloud, MagCloud, M-A-G-C-L-O-U-D dot com. It's a Hewlett Packard company, I believe. They do print-on-demand magazines and booklets. So it's a it's a mid staple, and they do four color process. It's a little bit more expensive than if you were to go through like a Lightning Source or Lulu, but you can do shorter runs. Set it up as a newsletter so people can automatically get the next edition. Right. Mag Cloud. M A G C L O U D dot com. Book Baby is, they do it. Um, there's Blurb, you know, you can look at Blurb. They're, they're more photo books, really. I don't know if that's going to fit with what you're trying to do. I think Mag Cloud might be the exact one you're looking for. Okay, I think I'm done. If you guys have questions, uh, yes, ma'am. Um, do I know anybody that's published through Hay House and Balboa Prep? I do not, so I can't really speak to that issue. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Hey. Lightning source. I, lightning source. Sure. They'll do anything. They'll do whatever. I mean, let me rephrase that. They will do. They will print anything that you can print legally. Um, it's the lawyer in me. Sorry. <laughs> yes, ma'am. No. Whether it's fiction, nonfiction, it doesn't really matter. The fiction books, if you want, the outline process will be the same in terms of developing your story structure. Boy meets girl, girl meets boy, they get a dog, they break up. What happens to the dog? <laughs> there you go. Speaking of which, these are available if anybody wants to buy one for $10 and I'll gladly autograph. And so will Steve. Talk afterwards.
Yeah. I'm sorry? Yes. Yeah, I'll be around. Thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it. I hope you got something of value. If you have questions, please feel free to pull us aside and we'll answer and do whatever we can for you. Thank you.